Nice channel. Good boy. 25 years to think that so long has gone by, it's really amazing. And it all started in 1996. Uh, this was a big, large stud farm. I was already here. As a jockey, I needed to keep my pet somewhere. 533. So one day, this, uh, the owner came to tell me that uh, this stud farm has been sold to a developer and I had to move out. I was desperate and then I got taken to this office to meet the, the new owner and that was G2. You know, I basically grew up with horses and uh, my family was uh, into racing. Uh, my uncle owned race horses, my father was into racing. When I came here to buy this property, I mean, since I'm in the real estate business, I actually wanted to make plots and sell. And uh, then when I saw there was a stud farm, I said, why not make it a theme around horses? The real estate market crashed in 96. Uh, so I had to abandon the plan, but uh, before I abandoned the plan, um, I, you know, I met uh, Silva here at the riding stables. And then we started his riding school and I said, okay, why not? You know, it's fun since anyway, I had passion for horses. So the place was called Embassy Ranch with a riding trail around it and a nice uh, international standard riding school, which was designed by a Singapore architect. I mean, it was designed so well. By then, the, the passion for riding and everything had already, the bug had got into me. You know, my kids were happy here, so they would just love coming here. I can't believe that it's been 25 years since this has been there. Like, all of it kind of still feels the same. Living here, we used to live here during the summer. Pretty much uh, come here every day after school, in the morning before school sometimes, uh, while we were training. Uh, this arena behind me is probably the first, uh, first place I ever competed. Can't believe it's been 25 years. I still remember the first time I came to riding school with G2. I fell in love with that place. Unlike the family, I don't ride anymore, but I enjoy being around them while spending some time with Silva. We started with just five, six horses and, you know, and then it just kept growing. And by 1997, we already hosted the first uh, Junior National. We won everything at the JNEC. Our kids were superb. Our instructors were fantastic. And our horses were always the best. Al Fabia Juma. Round of applause, everybody. Come on, you. And there were five really good kids there. We had uh, Karan, Aditya, Rishika, Nadia, and Aviva. So we traveled a lot all over the country for the JNEC. Very aggressive and only wanting to win. Yeah, and I think also one thing was that uh, we were initially the only all-girls team uh, and winning. I started off coming here when I was just a kid, four or five. My brothers used to come here to ride. But yeah, 25 years has gone by quick. You know, they say time flies when you're having fun. And this place has given me a lot of fun. Out of the three of us, I think me and Karan rode the most and I was by far the best. I was actually better off in dressage, which is actually the more boring sport. It's very disciplined and movement oriented. When I was competing, you know, I was you know, in my category, the children's category, junior category, I was one of the best riders. I think if you look at the, the talent there is today, you know, I probably wouldn't even be there in the top 10. With G2, basically, there was no limits, really. It's like more and more and more. And then in um, 2008, uh, we started buying horses to actually start training for the Asian game and have a competition yard and give opportunity to Indian kids, sponsor kids, to give it a shot. I think my very first riding lesson was at the Embassy International Riding School. And I remember we played uh, a lot of pony games, we had gymkhana races, and then Mr. Jitu Varani uh, was looking to 
field a team for the Asian Games. You know, I took that opportunity with both hands. I dropped out of school and uh, went off to the UK to to train and qualify for the 2014 Asian Games. When we went to Incheon, we realized that uh, there were four horses in the Indian team and we should have at least three of our own to control the score. Before any competition, horses are trotted up before the vet and members of the ground jury and uh, to make sure that they are in a fit state to compete. Accepted. If you have breed a warm blood, then he goes into training only at the age of four. So private breeders, to breed a horse and then wait for four years as the incubation period, it's, it's a long time. EIRS has taken a big step in having really quality warm bloods. 30 years back, Netherlands never had warm blood horses, but somebody bred and started breeding and now Netherlands has its own warm blood horses. And you know, me being adventurous, I said, why not we try it out? We started and you know, we have a, a nice collection of uh, them and you, you can't believe that these are the first sport horses in India uh, cre created here. This, and I presume, you know, like I'm 55 and I'm like 85 or something, maybe it'll be history in India too, you know. The Embassy International Riding School is an amazing, amazing facility. It's second to none and it can compare with with any top facility here in Europe. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, the care of the horses, such as farriery, stable management, um, footing and surfaces that horses compete on. Oh, the baby. You got to check horses, so the horses, the ones that are a little lame, not lame. Another big part of my job is to take care of the shoeing. Okay, next one. I reschool horses which have got problems, like a horse that develop habits. Uh, we have a round yard and that's an ideal place where you actually get them to understand and you can reschool them. Stop. Stop, baby. Come. Nice. The last Asian Games actually after selecting the team and the army decided to cancel the team. Uh, in India it's not a very easy thing even if you have the money and you want to sponsor and even if you're not asking anything. We took two flights to Delhi, went around chasing people, trying to make sure that Fuad is eligible and rightful for the Asian Games. And I was shadow working my dad the, at the time and I was just watching him and it was phenomenal how persistent he was in, in achieving that. And ultimately he got him through to the Asian Games and he got a silver, two silvers, and was just an inch off getting a gold. These people landed in January in uh, France and they could only train and compete till May to qualify and they competed in July and they won. So just look at the talent. So they all you have teams from Japan, Singapore, Korea, China, training in whole of Europe for four years. And these three Indian army men, you know, one officer and two Jawans and Fuad, but training for four, five months, they managed to get the country a medal. So which shows that, you know, there is determination, talent in our country, but it needs to be nurtured. Then Fuad went for the Olympics, so the, the whole uh, idea of getting India a medal for the Olympics is still uh, there. It was a great experience making it to Tokyo and being able to represent my country. It all fell into place at the very last moment and we, we got there in the end, we got there with a fit sound horse who gave a good performance, who, you know, who helped me show a good account of myself and helped me show the world what Indian equestrians are made of. You need to have a roadmap as to where you'll be a few years from now. You wouldn't have gone to the Asian Games if it hadn't taken a huge steps by Mr. Virwani. If he hadn't taken those steps, if he hadn't sponsored the riders, there would have been no chance of getting a medal. So I have lots of people. So it wasn't like a restricted to um, the affluent people. It was an open sport for everybody, which we wanted to sponsor. And whoever was best would, you know, go for the Asian Games and uh, for any competition or training. Riding started. I was age eight. It was. So that means riding started. It was. I twelve age. It was national. So junior nationally 2008 junior national medal. 
ಸೊ ಅದಾದಮೇಲೆ ನಾನು ಡ್ರೆಸ್ಸಾಸ್ ಮತ್ತು ಜಂಪಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಇವಾಗ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಿಂಗಿಂದ ಇನ್ನು ಮುಂದೆ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಅಂತ I'm been here from almost 20 years. My father used to work here for Selva. So I've been like around horses for like all my life now. Initially in the beginning I used to cry every evening with Selva saying that I can't do this job because it's difficult for me. So I started like that and then she said okay after degree you can work. I just wanted to say thank you to Selva because she made me the person I am today. is something that's very universal in the horse world and that's horsemanship how the horse thinks how the horse feel and how the horse react the better you are in understanding your horse the more you can get out of your horse which obviously will come very handy when you compete and the horse will give you a little extra just because he wants to do it for you it depends what you want to do if you just want to ride in the jungle you don't need professional high qualified instruction so you don't need the instructor who teaches to sit in the horse and gallop in the field but if you think that you want to compete you want to do it professionally and you want to enjoy your riding that's where you need to have qualified instructor that's very important the person who teaches he first understands what he teaches yeah because it's not only about telling the technical things it's more about understanding the horse the movement the communication the language he does it so much please <laughs> he like staring at the camera yeah and yeah. he's jumping he's jumping epl is kind of like a um, like it, it is like not a competition but it's mainly a practice for the jnc if you are a kid the only national event you have is once a year in december you cannot be an athlete if you only train two months a day and that's where the equestrian premier league tournament came about over the years the world is a fight jumping the world is open The Equestrian Premier League, which runs over a period of six months, starting from June to November, comprises mainly of the dressage and the show jumping events. When a rider does the entire course clear without dropping a jump or without a single penalty, then the rider has to do a jump off, which is a set of probably six jumps or five jumps. and has to be racing against the clock to do it fast and clear we have supported riders to compete at asian games and olympics and i admire jitu's obsession with getting the country a medal i'm sure that our goal is just around the corner congratulations But you know, I find it difficult. Like it's 25 years, but it just seems like yesterday. Like I thought, spending for three, four hours with my kids over here was much uh, better. They also grew up much better in the open air and outdoors, and you know, they've turned out to be fine kids now. This is such a great place for a kid because riding as a sport, me being afraid of heights, it teaches you a lot about confidence, about overcoming your fears. You know once you fall off a horse usually people stop riding but that's not where it stops if you continue riding either makes or breaks you you know and I'm glad it made me we go on a hack once in a way you know and uh, I mean I enjoy riding still So I always say that you know money is something it's, it's a means to make other people happy. I mean walk around here there are all happy people uh, probably from the village every little family somebody works here you know and everybody's prospering doing well. My dream is and which I will do it is to build a international arena where India can hold a nation games or an international event over here. My thing is that for me as far as I'm concerned it's India first 